Hey guys, Troy here. Today's video is about my journey with compression. So I've come to love compression. It's become really an indispensable part of my board and it didn't start that way really. So when I first entered into the worship genre, you know, Christ saved me at 26 years old. Uh, prior to that, I had played blues, R&B, um, and country really for the vast majority of my guitar playing journey. And uh, blues like heavily weighted toward the Steve Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, John Mayer style of stuff. And to me, you know, I didn't hear a lot of compression in that. You just slammed a Fender amp, you know, a Fender style amp with a Tube Screamer or like a King of Tone and just smoked it. And that was it. And that was the tone that you went for with a neck pickup uh, and with a Strat. That was really it. And I didn't really feel there was a need for compression. I didn't think the squashed tone, especially with neck pickup, would do me any good. The only time I ever used compression and it was very, very exaggerated was when we were playing country songs and I'd flick to the bridge pickup on a telly and get that chicken picking thing. So after having a compressor on my board for many years, but using it very, very sparingly, I now love compression. And I think I know why I didn't like it before. And everything stems from this new revelation about the Kemper. So I used a single Kemper for a lot of years and then I used stereo Kempers for a lot of years as well. And if you know anything about the Kempers, they are very, very compressed inherently. And I liked to gain up the profiles, so that didn't help. That was something that I loved to do. Uh, I would gain up the profiles, slam them with overdrive pedals, and the overdriven tone was amazing. But there was a lack of headroom. So then if I tried to add a compressor in the mix, everything would just get too jumbled up and too compressed. So I wasn't really seeing the benefit from compression because of the Kemper's inherent compression, but also my desire to gain up profiles, which basically eliminated headroom altogether. So fast forward to today, uh, using the Axe FX as my amplifier and the Universal Audio, uh, Ruby, Dream, Woodrow, those pedals, I run those at a very reduced level of bass gain when compared to what I ran the Kempers at. And this leaves headroom, right? There's room for the compressor to do its thing. There's room for the boost to do its thing. Now, that's the push and pull and the tug of war of tone is that I've had to make some pretty major adjustments to my overdrive pedals and how I run them. Um, you know, there's times where I wish I could gain them up a little bit more because I like that, you know, slamming the amp and already like really cooking amp with an overdrive pedal. I like that sound, but I like having headroom more. I like being able to use a compressor more. I like being able to have, you know, two, three dB of boost that I can uh, say hit with the prism and get that volume lift. Whereas I really wasn't able to do that before. So let's talk about how I use compression then. I know there's a lot of different ways to approach this thing, but my personal approach to compression uh, is really, really simple. I'm not like a sonic studio engineer that knows all the definitions of this stuff and understands the deep science behind compression or really a lot of this stuff in general, I just turn the knobs till they sound good. And if I find a pedal that's useful for me, uh, then I try to maybe have a bit of a better understanding of what it's doing, but I don't go deep into this kind of stuff. I don't have time to do that. I just want to know what can it do for me when I find out what it does after I turn the knobs and make it sound good, then I just move forward. So very simple approach to compression. The four main benefits I feel I get from compression and the four main objectives of using compression would be to smooth out the signal. So the transients, when you pick the guitar, right, it's ping and it, your, your transient note, it uh, kind of pokes out above everything else. Compression can reduce that to make it less prevalent. So that would be the first reason I use compression. The second reason I use compression is to add sustain. Now I was not experiencing this before in a positive way, I was getting the sustain, but due to the inherent compression in the Kempers and my, you know, my desire to run such a high level of gain on the amp end uh, was really causing everything to be over compressed when I would turn on the compressor. But now that I'm leaving headroom, I can get the benefit of the sustain that a compressor offers without it muddying up the signal too much. And uh, that's, one thing I think that would make me a little bit of an outlier is that I actually like compression with overdrive pedals. And we'll get to that a little bit more later. The third reason why I like to use compression is because it offers a fuller sound. 
So again, I don't understand the full science behind it. You can go watch videos made by uh, folks that are much smarter than I am explain the ins and outs of compression if you would like to learn that. But really my understanding is that compression brings those lower notes up or it pushes the higher notes down, so in terms of volume. So really what happens is the signal, your low notes are, were down here and now they're up here. So that makes for um, a fuller sound overall because the low notes are being brought up. Uh, you can correct me again if I'm wrong, but that's what my ears hear. And the last reason I use compression and the purpose is to act as a pre-drive boost. So prior to my new love for compression, the um, pedal that would act as a boost at the front of my chain, so just to kind of side uh, trail here for a second, I like to bookend my overdrive chain in boosts. So prior to compression, I would have a light overdrive at the beginning of the chain, which I still do, beginning of the chain that would provide a little bit of dB boost. And then I would have a clean boost, pure clean boost, which I still do, at the end of the chain, uh, Jackson Audio Prism is actually right below here beneath the pedal bridge. I would use that to get a true volume lift. So now I use compression as the very, very first pedal in my dry chain, and that actually provides a little bit of volume boost as well. So that's feeding everything else, and it actually pushes the inputs of my overdrive pedals and causes them to saturate a bit more. So if I want a little bit more gain out of one of my overdrive pedals, I can hit the compressor and it will feed into it that volume boost and push it into a bit more saturation. And next, I wanna talk about how does it maintain clarity? So how do we do that? Uh, let's get into that next. So how we maintain clarity with a compressor and using it in the fashion that I like to is it's a non-negotiable thing is to have a compressor with a blend knob. So you can parallel blend in your dry signal, so your uncompressed signal alongside the compressed signal, so you maintain that clarity. That's the easiest way to explain it. That way you can run high levels of compression and then blend in your dry signal and you still maintain that clarity while receiving the benefits of compression. Absolutely love that feature. That was a game changer for me. Even back when I was trying to use compression in the wrong way, I noticed a big, big difference um, in the tone I was able to get and how satisfied I was with a compressor pedal solely based on it having a blend knob. So if you're gonna go this direction, I highly, highly recommend buying a compressor with a blend knob. The next thing I'd like to do for you is go over some parts and play them without compression, and then I'll kick on the compressor and you can hear the difference and decide for yourself if you, know, you like the approach that I use and maybe you'd wanna incorporate that into your setup and how you're approaching everything as well. So let's get into the sound samples then. So here's some clean stuff. This is uh, some stuff that I do for Came to My Rescue by Hillsong. Josh Baldwin did this song as well. I'll play the part without compression and then I'll play it with compression and you let me know what you think. Okay, so now let's play a big, big driven part. Uh, we'll play it without the compressor first, and then I'll add in the compression and see what you think.
All right, so one thing I noticed there, and it's subtle, okay? But when I add in the compressor, because of the added sustain, it causes me to pull back a little bit and want to play less notes because I can get more sustain out of one note. You may have noticed when I did that, um, that little descending part, the... I, I hung on that note because I was getting that sustain from the compressor. So it caused me to play less, which I think is always a good thing. Okay, so this next one is the interlude piece to Yet Not I But Through Christ and Me by Spirit and Truth Music. We launch into uh, like a little hook that is the vocal melody to crown him with many crowns. So let's hear how that sounds without compression. <laughs> and with compression. All right, this next one is the hook to Be Thou My Vision, also by Spirit and Truth Music, the version that we did. Uh, let's play it without compression. Okay, let's add in the compression. You'll really notice this one sounds a lot fuller with the compressor. This is one of the first like really big aha moments I had when I was laying the tracks down for this particular song. I just wanted something more, but didn't want to add another gain pedal. And this is uh, what did it for me. So this is Freedom by Hillsong, the parts that I'd put together for that song. I thought these clean parts really benefited from compression. So here they are without. and with compression. This next one is Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery. So the hook on this song, the first time I play it, I play it with a low gain overdrive pedal. And I felt like this part benefited from the sustain that the compressor offers because the low gain pedal wasn't pushing everything enough, but I didn't want to add more gain again. I just wanted more sustain. And if you're wondering about the pedal that I'm using right now, this low gain pedal is from Dos Rios Audio. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of the pronunciation. I believe it is the Iano Estacado. Uh, if you can correct me on that, I'd appreciate it. I'm not really sure how, how to say it, but it's really a Marshall pedal, but it does the Marshall blues breaker thing, a la Morning Glory, with a lot more adjustment in terms of two band EQ and presence. This pedal is awesome. So uh, if you want to check one out, again, Dos Rios Audio. So this is the part without the compressor on. And here's the part with the compressor. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's my approach to compression. Very, very simple. Man, I'm a simple guy. I try not to overcomplicate things. 
you know, my philosophy to tone is if it sounds good, it is good. So I don't fall into the, well, you're not supposed to use compression with drives. Um, you know, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. To me, if it sounds good, it is good. You turn the knobs until it sounds good. And if it sounds good, then, you know, everyone's happy. So I would just say, try not to overcomplicate things. However, I can understand how not having a base level of knowledge as to why you'd even want to use something like this, uh, how that can be challenging. So hopefully this approach, my very simple approach to compression and understanding those four main benefits is helpful to you as you, again, navigate this journey. And uh, just like in every video, guys, firmly committed to making sure that we have the right perspective as to why we are doing this in the first place. You know, these pedals and these guitars and these videos and these YouTube channels and stuff that folks have, they don't mean anything without Christ. The Bible says that apart from the Holy Spirit, so Jesus living inside of us and empowering us to do things, we can't do anything. So if we're trying to do this under our own power or for our own own gain, our own glory, it's for nothing. That's sinful. That is sinful. On the other hand, if we're genuinely using these tools that God has blessed us with to bring him glory, to encourage his people through singing and also to spread the gospel to people that don't know Christ, then that's the aim. We want to aim high. That's the goal is to use these for the glory of God, the joy of his people, and to spread the gospel message to those who need to hear it, which is everybody. So if you're stumbling across this video and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, please know that apart from Christ, you are condemned by a holy God. God made you. God is holy and you are not and I am not. You have sinned against God. I have sinned against God. We are in willful rebellion against him. And the only difference between you and me is that Jesus Christ saved me. The Bible says that if you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. Your sins will be forgiven. So you repent of your sin, you turn from sin and you turn to Christ and you cling to him. You forsake all your good works. You learn and you understand that you cannot earn salvation. You cannot earn favor with God. It's only through the righteousness of Christ that becomes yours when you put your faith in him that you can please God and be reconciled to him. And the best news ever is that it's a free gift. The Bible says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So you don't clean yourself up first and then come. You come now. And he will change you. He will give you a new heart. He'll give you a new mind. He will transfer you from the domain of darkness to his kingdom. And God the Father will adopt you. So instead of be, being his enemy as you are now, he adopts you as his child. You have nothing left to prove. Once you put your faith in Christ, it's all been done for you. That is glorious good news, my friends. Glorious good news. And the fact that we even get to do this, get to use these pedals and these guitars and YouTube to bring him glory is such a privilege and honor. I'm just imploring you, for those believers out there, don't take it for granted. God owes us nothing, but he is so good and so generous and so merciful that he gives this to us to bring him glory. Don't waste the gift. Make sure that everything returns back to him in praise because he's worthy of it, because he saved you. That's the gospel. That's why this channel exists. That's the only reason why I do this. I hope that's helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to talk to you about my Savior, about the King who came and rescued me. I would love to talk to you about that. I would love to talk to you about that. Hope this was helpful, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Love you.